Hello, my biblical brothers and sisters. Today we're going to look at the dogmas of the church and the importance of those dogmas. The dogmas of the church are like these unchangeable rules that were handed down by God himself. So there are 255 statements that we must believe as Catholics. It's what makes us Catholics. It's the pillars of the church. So um, they kind of hold the rest of the church up. Every time you see any writings of the church, when people talk about magisterium or documents, they all must adhere to the 255 dogmas. They can't tr contradict any of those dogmas. Uh, they're really, really important as Catholics. Um, and even more important is we must make sure that we're in line, our understanding and our thoughts are in line with those dogmas. Because in the history of the church, if you were to go against one of those dogmas or decide for whatever reason that you disagree with one of them, then in history, you would actually be excommunicated. Uh, you would be classed as a heretic or um, and kicked out of the church. Um, in history, they would deny you communion and, and didn't deny you entrance into the church. So they're taken very seriously. And although we might not go that far as to do that now, they are still fundamental as Catholics and we must believe them. Um, and if you find that uh, your thoughts are not in line with those, then I'd suggest that you talk to your parish priest and, and really can consider why you disagree with one of those dogmas um, because it's really important that we do believe them because without th that belief the rest of the magisterium the rest of, of your understanding will be will be flawed um, because they're, they're all really really important now I'm not going to sit here and go through 255 dogmas, dogmas with you because it would just take forever but what I will do is I'll just cover some that I think are really important that um, I have uh, met people along the way that have had a differing opinion to one of the dogmas and I think it's just really important that we question why they might think that way and, and try and help them on their journey to understanding why those dogmas are so important to the Catholic faith. The first lot of dogmas uh, that I will mention are the ones around Our Lady and Our, our Mother. So you know, she truly is the Mother of God is one of the dogmas. She was conceived without the stain of original sin. So she didn't have the sin of Adam and Eve. She was assumed body and soul into heaven. So she was taken body and soul into heaven. And, and that's one of the dogmas. They, they are the dogmas of the church. So we must believe that. Also that she was a virgin. Uh, that's one of the dogmas. We must believe that she was a virgin before and after giving birth to Jesus. Uh, the Catholic Church was founded by God, man, Jesus Christ. So he founded the church. We all believe and understand that. Uh, Christ appointed the Apostle Peter to be the first of all the apostles and to be the visible head of the whole Catholic Church. Um, and that is the Pope. So Peter was the first Pope and that has been passed down and every Pope has that. Um, we understand that he is the head of the church. The Pope is infallible, infallible when speaking ex cathedra. So we understand that the Pope is infallible when he is speaking. Now, this is a little bit tricky because it's only when he's speaking ex cathedra. That is when he's sitting at the seat of Peter. He has only made two statements. Any Pope ever has only ever made two statements. And they were referring to a lady and talking about her assumption into heaven and those kinds of things. So only two statements have ever been made on the seat of Peter. So everything the Pope says is not infallible only when he's speaking on the seat of Peter. So don't just, you know, don't listen to what the Pope says coming off an aeroplane and say that's infallible. It's not, only when he's sitting on the seat of Peter. All sacraments of the new covenant were instituted by Jesus Christ. So all the sacraments that we celebrate in the church were all given to us by Jesus himself. And that's why we do them. So they are very important to the church. The body and blood of Jesus Christ is really and truly substantially present in the Eucharist. So as Catholics, it is a must that we believe that Jesus' body and blood is in the Eucharist during transubstantiation and after and forever in that substance. So we are consuming Jesus into our body 
and that's why it is such an important part of the Mass, and we must be very reverent during that time. The accidents of bread and wine continue after the change of the substance, so we acknowledge that there's still that substance of bread and wine as well. The power of the consecration resides in a validly consecrated priest only. So only an ordained priest may um, consecrate the Eucharist. For the worthy recipient of the Eucharist, a state of grace as, a, as well as a proper and pious disposition are necessary, meaning we must be in a state of grace to receive Holy Communion. So for many, many years, we always went to confession and then went to communion or confession um, in, in the week leading up. So very rarely would people go to communion if they hadn't been to confession in a month beforehand. So we've seen a big change in that and I think that comes back to not understanding the dogmas, not realising that we truly believe in the presence of Jesus and we must, be, we must understand that we should be going to confession and be free from those sins. The sacrament, uh, the sacramental confession of sins is ordained by God and is necessary for salvation. So Jesus told us we must be going to confession. We must go to confession if we are to expect to go to heaven. You know, it's, it's something that we should be putting in our routine, just like we go to mass, we should be going to confession. It's really important. And um, I think we need to start promoting that more uh, priests need to start um, putting that into their sermons just to make people aware that it's really important uh, for salvation. The soul of the just, which in the moment of death, <clears throat> free from all guilt of sin and punishment for sin, enter into heaven. So you have to be free from sin to get into heaven. The soul of those who die in a condition of personal grievous sin enter hell. There's the teachings around hell. And then the soul of the just, which in the moment of death, a burden with venial sins or temporal punishment due to sins enter purgatory. So there it's saying if we are dying and we're still in a state of sin, we will enter purgatory for a time before we can enter heaven. And there are some you know, basic teachings of our church and some of the dogmas. So they are just some of the um, important dogmas that we have as part of our church. And some of them might shock people um, but you know we had a really great catechesis um, in the past in the church and over time we've gone away from explicitly teaching those dogmas and I think it's it's really detrimental uh, to our salvation when we're not understanding the dogmas of the church and understanding what our role is as a lay Catholic um, so you know, I really really suggest that people learn and understand their faith and you can do that by looking at the link and looking at the dogmas of the faith. I'll put a link in there so you can look at some of the dogmas. Um, and yeah, just keep understanding what your role is to do and how we can be saved because you know that's what we all, we all want to be there, heaven eventually, all together. And um, let's do everything we can to get there. Um, take the hard road.